Bangladesh and Pakistan team. Let's have a look at the Bangladesh team first. Out goes Honan Sharka, Javed Omar, Tapash Boysha and Manjurul Islam from the Test match team. In comes the all-rounder Sanwar Hussain, Murtaza, the medium pacer is back. Tushar Imran, of course, first time, first exposure for him in Pakistan and so it is for Mushfikur Rahman. So that's the Bangladesh team. And of course, Pakistan team also making four changes. They're taking no chances at all in the one-day series. They got a bit of a scare in the test matches. Rashid Latif, the captain, is out because of the ban. Salman Butt, the left-handed opening batsman, is out as well. Saklan Mustaq, the off-spinner, goes back to England. And Yasur Ali, who made his test match debut in the last test. Quran Akmal, the wicketkeeper for Pakistan. Abdul Razak, great to see him back in the Pakistan 11. Junaid Zia is uh, the debutant or uh, perhaps the first game for Junezia. Yeah, Sikandar just mentioned about his talents and Shoaib Malik, the all-rounder, exciting cricketer, he is back as well. So quite a few changes in the uh, teams. Of course, Pakistan winning the toss and uh, batting first. So it's a uh, well, rejuvenated Bangladesh team uh, here in Pakistan that we see. So the Pakistan openers are walking out. Uh, it's the first one-day international in a five-match series in the Super Asia Test Series. Pakistan, of course, won the Test Series 3-0. And if they win this 5-0, they have a lot to achieve in that ICC one-day championship table. They could jump to number four if they win this uh, in a clean sweep. So a lot to play for for both Bangladesh and Pakistan. Our first commentators, Ramiz Raja, and with him, the voice of Bangladesh cricket, Athar Ali Khan. As we see, Mushafe Murtaza bowl the first ball of this one there. It's uh, pretty much uh, on target delivery, and that will be the course of the day for uh, the bowlers to be uh, on target. Nicely struck, lovely shot to get off the mark. He's played a beauty square through the offside. Now, this is Mohammad Hafiz's strength, and he's played that shot and he's backed his strength. A little bit short, but look at that timing. Not a little bit, lot of power behind it, but just a gentle push. But he was on top of it, and the gap was perfect. Eased it through, just caressed it. Mohammad Afi starting good. Picked up his first boundary for Pakistan and himself. Runs taken in this over. Pakistan not yet off to a flying start, but there is potential of a big score here on this track. If they preserve the wickets, I think Pakistan uh, will uh, hardly look to get uh, close to 250 or beyond. That's gone over the top. It's a healthy, meaty edge. Couple of bounces into the boarding hoods. Nine of the over, Pakistan, nine without a wicket. So good productive over for uh, Mohammad Afiz. This one uh, was a flashy shot. Hit hard over the slip cordon, no problems there. That's a no ball. Yasser Amir has driven that one uh, not very forcefully, but it's a decent shot. Attempted Yorker from uh, Mashafi Murtaza and no ball. On top of that, Yasir Hamid played that beautifully. Straight back past the bowler. Picked up two runs. It's a nice cut shot. Mohammad Rafiq will uh, tumble to stop the ball. Just a couple of runs coming off uh, that particular over. 17 without a wicket, Pakistan. Ah, that's beautifully played. Again, wit right on top of the point and cover. No ball. That is a big shot. In the slot for Mohammad Afiz. Now, he uh, loves them in that range. And the extra bit of uh, away swing um, helped in finding the width that he was looking for. And importantly, he went uh, with the shot.
That's Ash Dinesh, fine, he'll uh, get another four, that ball very quickly ran away over the boundary rope. This is not good stuff from uh, the young fellow. Mashfiqur Rahman will once again have a word of advice from uh, his captain. Although this was, was a better delivery than the last one, but since he does not have a lot of cushion behind the stumps, that ball uh, went away very quickly in the gap. Well, Mashfiqur Rahman has not been consistent. He's been bowling wide outside the off stump, even though the ball is shaping to move away from the batsman. But the line has been uh, not really up to the mark. And he's been put on, uh, giving him quite a few runs. Run rate now jumping to almost six. 33 without a wicket. This Bangladesh is the earning a lot of respect. That's a beautiful stroke from Yasser Hamid. He was quite edgy and nervy before this stroke. On that occasion, a bit of width outside the off stump. And Yasser Hamid is obliged. He's picked up a boundary here. What a great shot on the up. Beautifully played. Though there is a short cover. Uh, Khalid Mahmood is standing, uh, feeling there. But he found the gap beautifully. It was a great shot by uh, Yasser Hamid who scored 200 in his first test match. And then he struggled to score a 50. But uh, he's showing his form. He's opening for the first time for Pakistan. A uh, new role for him. Another one. That is... By far in this over, the best stroke Yasser Amid has played. Just managed to cross over the boundary line. Although, a valiant effort from the fieldsman. But a fun lane. Eight runs so far in this over from the bat of Yasser Amid. And Muthaza after bowling that ball out to the off stump where he was hit. Square on the offside. Tried to bowl towards the middle stump and very well picked by Yasser Amid. An excellent one day cricket shot. Beautifully played. And this is, these are the initial overs, the field are in, so it's a good chance for scoring runs there. A lovely shot by Yasser. Well, thanks to Inzamamur Haksining. It's a different territory, upish. But he'll clear the fieldsman. Third boundary of the over. 13 runs have been scored in this over, seven overs gone. Pakistan, 45 without loss. Yasser Ahmed has got the promotion. He's been asked to open the innings for the Pakistanis for the first time in his career. He was supposed to assist Mohammad Afiz, who's been opening the innings for the Pakistanis in the last five months. Has done well so far. Contributed with 16 runs. And that will make 20. Brings up the 50. Once again, trusting the bounce. The length wasn't that short, but it was the footwork of Yasser Amid which enabled him to free his arms. Quality stroke. Uh, that's, uh, it's not good bowling, Amir, because they have uh, six fielder on the offside. There's a, a short cover too, and he bowled towards the middle and leg stamp, and it's easy for the batsman when you have seven, uh, six fielders on the offside to hit uh, towards the onside and Yasser did a wonderful job, timed it well. He knew there is no bat, uh, fielder there, so very easy to hit. It's this partnership of 50 from 55 uh, balls is uh, building up now. Oh, once again, went after the bowler. He was looking to hit the ball through mid on. Not getting to the pitch, but still managed to control that stroke quite well. End of the over, 9 overs gone, Pakistan 55 without loss. Well, now we can see that uh, Yasser Hamid is very strong on the on whenever he gets a ball towards his middle stump, but this time it was on the off stump. But he seems to that he loved to play on the on side and he's enjoying there. Though he didn't time it well, the ball was not really in the middle, but uh, it was hit uh, with enough power to cross the boundary. He's got a different idea. Came down to the track on a no ball. 
and hit the ball crisply over mid off for four runs. They're looking dangerous, these Pakistani batsmen. Well, I'm really surprised Khalid Mahmood bowling a no ball because he never used a uh, bowl a no ball. Last time in bowl a no ball in the test match was uh, not a no ball. And this time, uh, Hafiz is doing a right job using his feet. There is no fielder at long off and long on, and it's easy to hit with his space. He's gone uh, through Miran. That uh, seems to be his favorite area, the onside, because he does punch the ball very hard by using his bottom hand every now and then. Plenty of runs have come in boundaries, uh, almost 62%. And it's been a lot of action from Pakistan right from the first ball. Promoted to opening the innings, Yasser Hamid has looked to play aggressively in this innings. He's taken a few risks as well, hit very much on the up, but good, uh, strong bottom hand getting the elevation and also enabling him to play on the onside. He picks up a single to keep the strike. 14 overs gone, Pakistan 85 for one. And there's somebody always breathing down your neck there. Appeal a strong one from uh, the bowler. Well, I thought the impact was outside the off stump. Gets his front foot across, Yusuf Johanna. Yeah, there you can see the ball meeting the pads and it's outside the line of the off stump. Alimdar says no, no uncertain terms. It does help a lot of seamers when the wicketkeeper comes up to the stumps. I think it's done the same for Mushfiq Rahman. Delicate touch. Was looking to do that right from the start of the over. That's four more to Pakistan. There's so many good things to watch here. Yusuf Johanna rose with the bounce. It wasn't an easy delivery to uh, control. Got big on him and how well he delayed his shot. There's a fielder there, but he had to play it fine. And boy, didn't he play that well. Just a slight bit of width. <laughs> Expecting uh, somebody to catch that one. Keeper is up, but it's a very, very difficult choice for the keeper to uh, get his body behind that one. I thought that was an excellent shot and this is good running. Yohana looked at the partner, who's very keen, Yasser Ramid. Well, Yohana will always look to turn the strike over. And this was just another example. Allowing the ball to come to him, not going at the ball. Running it down and uh, once again finding the gap. Right through throughout this innings uh, you'll see him looking for the gaps lovely timing great shot he's so good in that area and looks so elegant and this one was a classy shot not a typical one day hard hit it was all pure timing well undoubtedly for me this is the best shot of the innings for Yasser Ramid and that's because as you said not a one day shot I think he's played far too many one day shots in this innings being given the responsibility to open the innings and perhaps feeling obliged to score a lot of runs in the first 15 overs. But on that occasion, he allowed the ball to come in. A very orthodox cricketing shot. And that's what he is, an orthodox batsman. Pakistan, 95 for one. Got 17 wickets in the Test Series, included two five-wicket hauls. And almost won the game, the last one, the last Test match for his team. He's got six fielders inside the circle. We'll get a run and bring up the 100 for Pakistan. Good show. Thank you. That was beautifully struck. A little bit of width. And Yusuf Johanna was right on top of that. Classic shot. That was a rarity. A bad ball has been pitched by Muhammad Rafiq. He's been uh, probing on the off stump all through uh, the Test match series, but on that occasion, just providing the batsman a lot of width outside the off stump, although the length was right. But Yusuf Yohana, very quick to pick up the length and the line. Sweet, not controlling the stroke very well. Use of Johanna 
three top deliveries in this over. Much more depth in the Pakistan middle order this time for the one days. It's a very good foundation these two guys have. That's a good shot. That's a classic shot. It's gone. It's gone. One for six. Last delivery of that over was beautifully placed. Just took a few steps coming down the track. And the timing was perfect. Crowds on his feet. Yusuf Johanna struck that really nicely. Uh, Yusuf Johanna finally deciding that enough is enough. I'm siding the ball very well. The mid on is up. He has to go after the baller. Came down to the track, not quite getting to the pitch of the ball. And that was the right thing Yusuf Johanna did over there. Because when you're looking to hit the ball up in the air, you just have to get underneath the ball. He was not looking to hit the ball very hard. Just timed it to perfection and cleared the boundary line and also the fieldsman at Whitish mid on. And that's the first six of the innings. That's nicely played uh, by Yusuf Johanna. He looks content to pick up singles and put the bad ball away. But that was really close, uh, the previous delivery which was faced by Yasser Hamid. Mohamed Rafiq has picked up Yasser Hamid quite a few times in the test matches. So he'd be keen to pick him up. Just one away from his first 50 in one day nationals. And that's it. Now he has to wait. Well, he's been very impressive, Yasser Hamid. When he's made his uh, one day international debut in Sri Lanka, the first game he played, his team was in trouble and the pitch was wobbling around. But he did well. And that's it. Just a simple nudge, using the pace. Just sending the ball on its way for four rounds, and that's his 50. Very well played, the young man. And bringing him his very first 50 in one in national, Yasser Hamid. That is a very good one from Yasser. 53 of just 81 balls, picking up on his way seven boundaries. So. He was quite severe on the drives and the short pitch deliveries. This time around, just played nicely. End of the over. It's Pakistan 131 for one. That's a great shot. Down the track, hit over the head of the bowler. What a shot. Well, there was a field spinner, deep mid off. And the mid on was out. Yasser Hamid had two options, either to go over the head of the mid-on or straight over the head of the baller. Doing it beautifully, hitting the ball over the head of the baller for four runs, followed by a quality stroke on the offside. And that stroke is going to give Yasser Hamid two runs. Eight of the over. So far for the Pakistani batsman in this over. These two batsmen are now looking dangerous. So he just might put up a huge total here. Another single. Not afraid to take singles as well, even though the boundaries are coming at a regular pace. But they're very keen to place the ball around the fielders, playing with the soft hands picking up the ones even though there are a lot of gaps around so it's good cricket nine of the over 27 overs gone Pakistan one four four for one when they're looking to do the same thing they're looking to accelerate in the middle overs and the last delivery Yasser Ali came down to the track with all the certainty and hit the ball beautifully into the gap very strong on his legs Yasser Ali picking up another single on the onside I remember when we saw the wagon wheel of Yasser Ali just after completing his 50 the important part was he scored almost 70% of his runs from the left side. So it just shows that little bit of more bottom hand coming into use, playing on the left side. 
but he plays it with a lot of authority. 150 comes up for Pakistan and looking dangerous. Plenty of overs to go. And the way Yasser Hamid is batting at the moment, he should be looking for his first 101 day internationals. Beautifully played on that occasion, delaying his stroke and then using the pace on the ball and picked up the second boundary in the over. 28 overs gone. Pakistan 154 for one. What a beautiful late cut. Absolutely beautiful to see this. This time around, playing with a very soft hands. But look at the outfield. I think it's lightning fast this today. Well, the run rate is quite good at the moment for the Pakistani team. Yasser Ramid once again getting into the act. Once again has been able to put the ball into the gap. That was his 11th boundary. Growing in confident and never hesitant to play anything pitched up to the onside. He loves playing in that area. This time he had the bat. Could that have been nicely this time? Gentle push towards the mid-off. Picks up another single. 100 partnership between these two. And at the moment, Pakistan is 162 for one in 29 overs. He's gone up in the air. Has he hit it well enough? He has. Mohamed Ashraful at long off just watches the ball sail across. So that's six to Yasser Hamid. And Pakistan move on to 176 for one. And Yasser Hamid in his 90s. That's a beautiful shot by Yasser. Came down the track and smashing it over deep long off for a six. Playing with the spin, a beautiful stroke. He's quite correct in the way he plays. Good model for any youngster. Johanna wanted the run, and this has been the problem with Yasir Hamid. Now, direct hit. But that's where Bangladesh is so good at. Johanna had problems with the younger partner right through the innings. He's not a happy man, and I think he has a right to be. Yasir Hamid has this habit of just uh, looking at his shot after he's played it. There was a run in it. He wasn't aware of that fact. So a livid Johanna returns to the pavilion. Another bonus wicket for Bangladesh. Yeah, that was a big confusion here. That look at Yasser, he's still watching the ball. And look at Yusuf, he's halfway down. And what a good pick up and throw direct hit. And the Yusuf, Yusuf is gone. What a big bonus for the Bangladesh team once again. Please. Yusuf going back, ran out in 49 in Pakistan, a 182 for two. Just nine matches needed for 300 runs and another milestone, a big one for Inzimam. 43 runs needed to complete 9,000 runs in one-day internationals. Would be the first Pakistani batsman to achieve that when he does. And the sixth in one day international cricket all over the world. Starts off with a sweep shot, may go all the way. There's Mohamed Rafiq in uh, chase, uh, he's managed to boot it back, which allows Zimam to take three runs. That's a much better shot, should be four. Bad delivery. It was a quick delivery with a lot of room for the batsman, but nicely played. Moves on to 99, Yasser Hamid. Yeah, maybe tried for a Yorker, but it was too much width for this, uh, that delivery, Yasser. Just opening the face of the bat at the last moment, knowing that there is no slip and the field at third man is quite wide. Look at this last moment adjustment for Yasser Amit and he's in 99 so I'm sure some butterflies in the stomach Sanjay 
You bet. It's the first one day international 100 for him. So the crowd getting behind Yasser Hamid, who delighted the crowd at Karachi with 202 innings. Now it's turn of Multan to witness another international 100 from this uh, new star. There it comes. First 100 for Yasser Hamid in one day international cricket. And this is only his sixth one day match. Well done. What a fantastic innings from Yasser Hamid. I'm sure this was uh, the task given to him by his captain and he has responded so well. What a wonderful sense he scored his first in international cricket. One day international cricket. And uh, I think he's played some majestic strokes to throughout. What a fine knock for the youngsters. I'm sure maybe openers somewhere will be thinking something else. The openers were left out of the team. It has been uh, smooth, consistent sailing for Pakistan batting lineup. It's put away in the air once again, finding the gap. It's gone all the way, has it? It's a six, a mighty blow. Yasser Hamid is having the ball out there. Well, he's uh, looked like that hitting the ball is so easy, but I tell you, this boy is seeing the ball so well and timing it. It was pulled one again, once again, the same spot. Down the track, that's taken. It's a nice, smart catch. Rajan Saleh made no mistake. Alok Kapali has picked up a wicket. Yasser Ramid has picked up 14 runs. That was a smart, neat catch. Extremely good innings from Yasser Ramid. Made to open for the first time for Pakistan and he has responded with authority in this one. Coming down the track and not controlling that drive. Good catch. Yunus Khan is a stylist. He's out there replacing Yasser Ramid. 87 matches. Important play in the middle order. Very good strike rate. Best of 90, still uh, to score a one-day 100. Making room and, uh, well, almost a brilliant catch. That ball was struck extremely hard. It's a look Kapali and I think he's uh, struggling. He's got uh, a bandage on his little finger and, uh, well, this one was a meaty blow. That was a great attempt by Kapali. Beautifully tried, uh, but uh, couldn't hold the ball till the end. Once again, Yunus Khan is sweeping his favorite shot. He loved to play that shot, and he scored so many runs uh, playing that shot. And Imzuman, who just uh, played a big one, making room, but Kapali dropped it. Good attempt. Yes, the idea was right. Going over covers. That's a much better option. It's a more positive blow. Has it gone all the way now? If that's a six, that is a classy hit. Umpire Aleem Dar will confer it with his partner. Lovely clean hit from Yunus Khan. Now he has the ability to play these shots, playing with the spin, so uh, easy option there. And yes, I think uh, the indication from the ball boy was that it's gone all the way. That's hit hard. Has no chance, Ashraful. He was at long off and the ball was just about maybe 20 yards to his left. He had absolutely no chance. That raced away to the boundary. Short. Picked it out nicely. No protection at the mid-wicket boundary. Four easy runs for big man in Zamam. Another shot on the leg side. The best of the three shots that we've seen in that direction. Three fours so far in this over. Well played. Slow delivery. Skill from the bowler. And more skillful from the batsman. That's another four. 18 runs of that Murtaza over. There it is. 9,000 runs for Inzamam. And again, another big one. This is a cracking shot. Not quite the sweep, but he's picked up the length beautifully. Another big one from Yunus Khan. 
Tremendous partnership between two top-class batsmen. And that uh, is a way of the bat for Yunus Khan. That's because he's got a 50. With so many landmarks achieved, he sneaked his way to 53. He's gone fine, and he's played it well. Uh, he got behind the ball in the right time, but still couldn't prevent the boundary. Brings up the 100 runs partnership between Inzamam and Yunus Khan. Oh, that's a bad delivery. And that brings up the 50. 65th 50 for Inzamam. And again, a bowler looking for the Yorker, not able to control it. And there's a good chance Pakistan might get their highest total against Bangladesh. Nice juicy full toss on the right uh, length, and that's easy picking. And Zimam says thank you very much. 320 is the highest score for Pakistan against Bangladesh. Will they get it? They will. That's another four. Some real expensive overs in the dying stages of that innings for Bangladesh. Pakistan have ended up with 323 for three of 50 overs. 20 of the last over. And that is their highest score against Bangladesh. So they've come back with a vengeance. Pakistan ending up with their highest ever total against Bangladesh in one day internationals. 323 for three. And all Pakistani batsmen were in a hurry. Top scorer Yasir Hamid with 100. And an excellent partnership between Inzamam and Yunus Khan. Seeing Pakistan to, well, they piled a mountain of runs here. 323 for three in their 50 overs. A forgettable day for Bangladeshi bowlers. Just the two bowlers under the economy rate of six. The rest all suffered against Pakistani batsmen. So not such a great bowling display for the Bangladeshi bowlers. And there you see the target for Bangladesh when they come out to bat in the afternoon. 324 to win of 50 overs at 6.5 per over. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have the start of the Bangladesh innings. Stay with us. has been stroking the ball consistently well in the test matches well he's got uh, a job on hand 36 matches uh, 650 runs not a great strike rate considering that uh, he can belt the ball around we've seen him to do that in the test matches Omar Gul had a very very convincing test series not only contributed with the ball in the last test match but also buried well within Zamam al -Haq in the dying hours of the game to win it from Bangladesh Added 52 with Inzi, that uh, all important second last wicket partnership. New opening pair for Bangladesh. Mama Darshapul has opened earlier, but Habibul Bashar has been slotted into open innings since he's had a rich run. Scored a lot of runs in the test series, 376. Ended up scoring the highest number of runs in the either side. So faces up to the likes of Omar Gul. Starts off with a wide. Different form of game for Umar Gul. Made his uh, debut in this form of the game in Sharjah. But in Test Match Cricket, uh, you can get away with these deliveries. Not in one-day internationals. Seven wickets so far in eight matches. Economy rate of 4.6. That will improve. He's still very young and still learning. Good decent strike rate, 39. That might that might have been really lucky. Umpire Russell Tiffin must have thought about it whether to go for the white signal. Set it against it. Having a chat with Yusuf Yohana. So important for Bangladesh to have a good solid start, lay the foundation for the middle order and the low order that's when they come in and chip for runs it's imperative for Habibul Basha and his partner not to think of that huge gigantic total this was a lovely delivery from Omar Gul in that channel has been in that channel right throughout the uh, test series yes as openers it's important that you uh, 
stay in present and not uh, think ahead. Habib al Bashar has uh, got the quality, he's got the form to get Bangladesh off to a good start. It's a no ball, not a good, uh, efficient start from Omar Gul. He's been in uh, efficient medium pacer. A wide and a no ball. And Murtaza was uh, in his opening spell quite a few balls, quite a few new balls. This, this was tight, but at least some part of the body has to be behind that line. That white line. It's a close call. It's important for Bangladesh to come out with a positive frame of mind, as you said. They don't think about the total. If the ball is there to be hit, they should hit it. Look for singles. Just remember, this is an inexperienced bowling attack. Pakistan uh, experimenting with youth. Umar Gul uh, has become a star, has become uh, the strike bowler. Very quickly, remember, he just made his test match debut a couple of weeks back in Karachi. But he's learned the art of uh, taking the responsibility very quickly, and that augurs well for Pakistan cricket. If these young players can handle the pressure and strike, nothing better than that. That's a drive, but it goes to the fielder. Mohamed Afi as well. He started off the season with uh, some fantastic effort in the field, but his feeling seems to have gone down a little. Test cricket can be taxing and uh, physically consuming. And uh, we've been playing under extreme conditions uh, in the test matches, so that could uh, very well have affected him. Habib Basha opening his account with a nice-looking stroke. 6.5 runs per over required to win this game for Bangladesh. He shuffles across and given by the umpire who waited for uh, quite a while before he decided that the impact was within the stumps. Now, this should be interesting. Umar Gul strikes very early in the day for Pakistan. Ashraful having a quiet word with his partner. But he did shuffle across a great deal. Interesting to see where it hits him. Just might be a little bit high on that occasion. Over the rolls, but right in front. Missing the edge of the bat, but right in front of the plump. I think in the end, it is a good decision. Russell Tiffin took his time. Bangladesh loses its first wicket. Mohamed Ashraful goes out for a duck. LBW to go. Three for one. Rajan Saleh was so impressive in the test matches, making his one-day international debut, becoming the 67th Bangladeshi to achieve uh, this honour. He will face uh, Omar Gold. This is how Mohamed Ashraful felt, shuffling across a great deal, and I thought it was a decent decision in the end. Would have gone on to hit uh, part of middle and a major portion of uh, of middle of uh, off stump. And he's off the mark straight away. Four for one. Now Bangladesh should uh, look to play out the entire quarter of 50 overs. That should be their target. Do not look for uh, heroics early on uh, in this innings. They've lost a wicket. Now that's a cracking shot. Now that is a terrific shot. Belted it away through covers. Rajan Saleh has smashed that into the cover region. Look at that shot on top of it and with a lot of power. Awesome power. Went to the boundary. Raced it like a bullet. 
It's a good shot. That should give uh, the young guy making his debut in a one-day national a lot of confidence. Pakistan hit uh, 45 fours and six sixes. Sorry, 35 fours and six sixes. And this is the first by Bangladesh. But if he stays out there, there'll be plenty more to come. And the obvious reply was uh, wayward. Kamran Akmal really had to be straight. Four wides. That's a real wayward delivery from Omagul. Kamran Akmal coming for Rashid Latif. Had no chance to get onto that. It's too wide. It'll be interesting to see, uh, Ramiz, that uh, whether the new captain, Inzam Amul Haq, would come from a long way from the slips and talk to the bowlers. Because that's most of the time, most captains do that. I have my doubts. No one can uh, wake him up from his slumber. And Zamam uh, likes it there in the first leg. But I'm sure uh, he would have a strategy and he would have uh, told his bowlers what to do. His mere presence is impressive for uh, most of these young players. They've been longing to play with him. He's been an excellent role model, a terrific player. And now the captain. They all respect him in the dressing room and that is uh, what you want from your captain, to be respected. He's probably feeling the heat at this stage. I know in Zamani would want to be uh, sitting in the dressing room. Eighteen for one. It's two more deliveries to go in this over. Inzaman must be a pretty satisfied person after posting that huge total of 322. Well, it's important for Bangladesh not to lose any wickets, as you said before, play at the 50 overs, but at the same time, be positive. Look to play strokes. If the ball is there to be hit, they should. On to the off stump. This time, Mohamed Nafis picks up cleanly. He's stroking the ball confidently, showing good signs. Not easy to bat at three, especially when a wicket has gone down in the first over. There's so many things playing in your mind. Will I survive this? My first one international. How will I cope with the pressure? Now, Rajan Saleh, we've seen him uh, to be uh, a player with, with an excellent temperament. Slow delivery and he finds the gap. Mohammad Hafiz is after the ball. In fact, uh, the race is won by Janetza. Chance of a run out. Oh, direct hit would have certainly got them in a trouble. It would have been extremely close had that direct hit been taken. 21 for one. Well, definitely there was a chance of a run out. Janetza. Throwing it to Yunus Khan and then direct head would have been definitely gone off for Habibul Basha. And then uh, the keeper did not collect it cleanly. And if we would have done that, it would, it would have been bye bye Basha. But he survives. And it is 21 for 1. <laughs> That was a rarity. Omar Gul over pitching. And Habibul Basher was itching for that kind of a delivery. He's able to hit his first boundary. That was a beautiful shot. Uh, slightly over pitched by Omar Gul. And Habibul Basher in position very, very quickly. Playing on the up and through that gap. Beautiful shot for Habibul Basher. He'll do a lot of good for him, uh, for his confidence. But Omar Gul has been expensive. He's bowled quite a few no balls and then six wide so far in a spill of fast bowling.
direct hit. Huge shout. And it's been referred. Rajan Saleh playing the ball with the soft hands. But the fieldsmen really charging in and releasing the ball very quickly. And I think uh, Habib al Bashar is out. A very committed effort from the Pakistani fieldsmen. Yasser Hamid was the man. He's inches away from the crease. And that'll mean that the Bangladeshis, they've lost their second wicket. What a tragic way to lose your second wicket. And especially the man who has done so well in the series, Habib al Bashar. It's a very big blow for the Bangladeshis. This was a brilliant uh, pick up and throw from Yasser Hamid. And what a day he's been having. The crowd is loving it. That's uh, the Bangladesh batsman, very rejected. This Pakistan team congratulating. Just put, pushing inside the circle and Yasser Hamid very quickly. The circle and Yasser Hamid very quickly. Bouncing upon it and throwing it in a flash. Very fine feeling and brilliant pick throw. Well, Habib al Russia only contributed in six runs. And Bangladesh, 28 for two. Testing time for Tushar Imran, who's been specially flown into Pakistan to feature in this one day series. That was confidently played. And the reason why he's at the crease because Rajan Saleh was looking for a quick single, but Yasser Hamid reacting very quickly, releasing the ball in one go, and found the batsman inches short of the crease. He's having a wonderful day, Yasser Hamid. Picked up his maiden uh, international hundred. And now he has contributed in the field as well. Picking up a run, off, run out for his team. And that's very important when you have uh, put up a mammoth total of 323 in 50 overs. The opposition, they'll be looking for the boundaries. And if the ballers, they are bowling a very tight line and length, the fieldsmen, they really have to be alert because the batsmen, they'll have the last resort. Huge shout. Of picking up singles and rotating the strike. And of a maiden over from Shabir, Bangladesh, 28 for two. That is racing towards the boundary line, although Shabir tried really hard to stop that one and it was in vain second boundary for Rajan Saleh the ball drifted down the leg side and very nicely glanced by Rajan Saleh very fine player and uh, Shabir did try to stop it but in vain but it was a good try dived full length he's a tall man 6'3 six, 6'4 did a good job to stop it, but in vain. It's good to see nowadays these fast bowlers putting a lot of effort in their fielding. Oh, the best one from the Bangladeshi player. What a shot that was. A lot of arrogance in that particular one. That was a wonderful stroke from Rajasala once again. The bit was there, the pitch of the delivery and playing it on the up through that gap. This boy has talked very highly. He's got a lot of potential, a lot of promise. A very fine cricketer. Well, that was a beautiful stroke from Rajan Saleh. Omar Gul has uh, been able to move the ball around. Never easy when you're looking to hit the ball through extra cover and on the up. There is always a danger of edging one into the wicketkeeper's hand or the slip fieldsman. Controlled the stroke beautifully, Rajan Saleh. Nine of the over, Bangladesh, 37 for two.
should be out. The batsman is walking. The umpire didn't have to make the decision. Shabir Ahmed joining the party. He was very unlucky not to pick up a wicket in this spell. But on that occasion, finally managing to get the edge of the bat. And Kamran Akmal on his comeback game, taking an easy catch behind the stumps. That was beautiful delivery from Shabir and Tashar Imran. Gone for not. Bangladesh, 39 for 3. Alok Kapali has arrived at the crease. He was hit in the third test match here at Multan. Had three st stitches at his eyebrow. And the reason why he has arrived at the crease because Tushar Imran has nicked one to Kamran Akmal. That was a good delivery from Shabir. End of a successful over from Shabir. Bangladesh, 39 for 3. Beautiful shot that was from Malok Kapali. What a way to get off the mark. End of the over, Bangladesh, 44 for 3. Taking the aerial route on that occasion, Rajan Saleh. Required desperate stuff from Rajan Saleh, who's been more confident uh, in this uh, inning so far. He's played some good strokes, but this time he was slightly desperate to go over the top. There it is, the ball pitching on the off stump and leaving way. Saleh going, trying to go t over the top, but lucky never easy for a batsman last ball of the over for Zia six runs coming off that over Bangladesh moved to 78 for five you'll see the 116 to Yasir Amin and Yohan unfortunate to be run out on 49 and then in Zimam and Yunus Khan played a blinder 56 and 59 respectively and both innings coming in very quick time That's a good shout. Finger goes up. Abdul Razak picks up his third wicket. Alok Kapali had taken a few chances, played some glorious shots, but uh, this one was uh, just right in the center. Alok Kapali playing all over, in fact, losing his balance. In fact, that was perhaps the reason for him getting out, didn't quite balance himself properly, falling over on the off stump. Impact seemed to be very much in line. In fact, he slipped, to be fair to him and plum in front so Razak having a good time he's picked up his third wicket Alok Kapali has gone for 26 Bangladesh further into deep waters 78 for 6 he's a good cricketer Khalid Mashud wicket keeper batsman for Bangladesh 78 for 6 time for a change in commentary it's going to be Ramiz Raja and with him uh, hoping to change his team's fortune is Athar Ali Khan Well, maybe Atha, you can explain this to me. Do you really want me to explain this to you, or...? All right, the plum in front. No doubt about that. Abdul Razak uh, in the middle of a very good spell. Three wickets so far to the all-rounder. That's a great shot. Chris side of the bat. Impact was a sweet. 85 for six. Driving and finding the gap mid-off was just a little square. Shabir Ahmed will chase it, but all in vain. Well, if you beat the fielders at one go the ball eventually crosses over the boundary because of a fantastic outfield lightning fast 
few Bangladeshi flags supporters did not really time it well but he found the gap and once he found the gap it usually goes out to the boundary that's a good confident shot from Khalid Mashud goes with a slim similar kind of action like the way the Saklain Mushtaq bowls and he's also developed the war ball that is go the other way so it's a very important armory in Shoaib Malik's bowling nice drive just ease into that drive that's a lovely connection it wasn't the connection from from uh, Shoaib Malik but nicely struck through mid on This situation should offer uh, some of these Bangladeshi batsmen a period where they can uh, get back into some kind of form. Khalid Mashood has been uh, their key player in the later order batting lineup, so it's an opportunity for him really to score some runs and uh, get a bit of confidence. That's uh, gone in the air, but away from the fielder. Yunus Khan was advancing aggressively to take that one. A couple of runs taken and Bangladesh raises their 100. It was a close thing in the end. Khalid Mashud tried to control it but could not. Luckily that dropped short of the fielder in the mid-wicket region. Just the two fielder at the boundary line for Mohammad Afi. So Bangladesh batsman can pick a few runs here. I think right now both these batsmen uh, will be looking to uh, play a few overs out there. Uh, Bangladesh would have uh, done themselves some service if they uh, can carry on till then. Still plenty of overs left. Oh, great delivery now. Is that close? And yes, close enough for the umpire. The straighter one from Ahmad Afi is doing uh, a great deal of damage. Khalid Mashud was not able to read this one. The connection doing a great deal of damage. That is absolutely beauty. He played all over it and right in front. No doubt on that occasion. That's a good wicket for Pakistan. Khalid Mashud goes out for 14. Bangladesh. 100 for 7. Mushfiqur Rahman is the new batsman for Bangladesh. Well, things are getting very serious for them. 7 down for 100. This game had a great tone uh, to its character when it started off because uh, there was plenty of action from Pakistani batsmen and we were hoping that Bangladesh would challenge it. in one for seven and I think that is uh, where Bangladesh is uh, have gone wrong generally they have not been consistent as we see that one uh, given away as four buys Shweb Malik getting the spin from uh, wrong line not easy for the keepers to collect uh, those deliveries Keeper has stationed himself just outside the off stump, anticipating the takes on that off and uh, at times middle stump. But when the ball goes uh, from middle stump away down the leg side from an off spinner, it becomes doubly hard for the keeper to side the ball and get in position. One oh nine for seven. Pakistan would want to finish this as quickly as possible. And there have been plenty of uh, balls that have gone uh, at silly mid off and mid on uh, after hitting the bat. Rebounding of pads. And 
that's gone through once again. Kamran Akmal didn't bend himself down enough to uh, control that one. Four buys taken. 113 for seven. Six. And that was in the finals of the Bank Al Fala Cup. It's been a problem that Pakistan is trying to eradicate from their game. Conceding of uh, just too many extras. A very right Sanjay, but I'm sure uh, the coach must be doing some remedial work after this game with these uh, players because these uh, extra runs are so very important uh, in both forms of cricket. It uh, certainly changes the whole atmosphere on the field for both the sides, especially for the fielding side. There he goes, straight to the field up. Shabir Ahmed is a tall man. Went straight to him. So Mohamed Afiz picks up another wicket. And he's quite a handy cricketer in one-day cricket. Opens the innings, plays some sparkling shots, and then picks up some wickets for his side with his off-spinners. He's, he's a very utility character for his team. Just slightly flighted. And the batsman going down the pitch, trying to hit it over Shabir, but he's so tall, it couldn't do that. Couldn't get the elevation he wanted to, but straight to Shabir Ahmed, who's 6'4", and uh, wouldn't let that ball go. So, Sanmar Hussain, the pass, a 19, Bangladesh, 124.8. Mashrafi Murtaza has come in. Is the number 10 batsman for Bangladesh strike rate of 74.6 he'll need more than that to win the game for his team as we see another wicket fall that was the last dismissal the batsman trying to hit it over the top of uh, long off it was inside the ring Shabir Ahmed very easily snatching that and giving Hafiz his second wicket <laughs> missing leg stump denied by the umpire 120 for 8 so this is a sorry performance by Bangladesh, set to chase 323. Well, Sanjay, what do you reckon? I think uh, there's a huge difference between the performance of uh, the Bangladesh in Test cricket and this one day cricket. Well, I think Pakistan have just come out uh, thinking differently. Pakistan during the Test series at times I thought were a little indifferent perhaps with the knowledge that they would win the series in the end that's four well there's no protection now on the offside nobody in the deep and slightly short in length and capitalized well slightly short and he gave himself enough room and make sure that uh, it goes into that gap beautifully struck st stroke for four runs I think Sultan Amir Sohel also made a very good point during the break at the start of the Bangladesh innings that Bangladesh can compete with Pakistan in this one day series no ball the last one if uh, the pitches help their bowlers and if we have another flat pitch like this uh, I don't think the bowlers have the ability to really restrict the Pakistani batsmen the kind of batsmen that we now have for the one day matches If they bowl first on a fresh wicket, maybe they can create some early inroads, put Pakistan under pressure. But I think um, most importantly, I think it's the emotional angle, the temperament of Pakistan that has changed after the Test Series. Rashid Latif in the post-match presentation said that we're going to beat Bangladesh 5-0. So it was a very uh, sort of deeply hurt Pakistan team. Their pride was hurt and they're just coming back strongly at Bangladesh. Yes, certainly they are. I think uh, they performed uh, not actually the, 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 the way they wanted to during the Test Series. They wanted to win it quite easily. That's what they have thought. And uh, but I think Bangladesh uh, did a wonderful job by having upper hand uh, in two Test matches. And uh, in the last Test match here at Multan, they almost won it. And I'm sure the Pakistan teams must be on their feet now, must be more active, more agile. and. Uh, this new captain must have spirited, uh, given them something uh, to think about. Plenty of fielders in the, the ring to save the singles. Thanks, 
This series is turning out to be very good for Inzim Amulak, especially if, 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 you, if you recall he was out from the team after the World Cup. He's gone up in the air, hasn't got the middle of the bat, so it's not really going to travel all the way or may just have enough legs. Now, drag back. Mohamed Hafiz with a long throw. Right into the sun was the ball for the wicketkeeper. So an expensive over from Shoaib Malik. Bangladesh 129 for eight. And it seems uh, we're going to have drinks or maybe one more over. 129 for eight. Pakistan looking to wrap up the Bangladesh innings as well in the first two test matches. What what a knock you played at this very ground, and uh, I'm sure you will you will be. Uh, uh, perhaps a new career for his imam. He's got at least five matches here as Pakistan captain. With Rashid Latif ruled out for the entire one-day series. Oh, there's another run out. We've seen a few today. Two batsmen ending up at one end. So the ninth wicket gone. And we are coming to the end of this match. It's a complete miss. Well, it's a complete mess. And uh, the Bangladesh team is all at sea. The batsman pushing it in front of him, shot mid wicket. Yunus Khan throwing it towards the keeper and both the batsmen were at uh, actually the non-striker end. So there was no response from the batsmen at the non-striking end. And no need to refer that one to the TV umpire. Murtaza gone for eight and Bangladesh 140 for nine. Mohamed Rafiq, the left-hand batsman, and I have a feeling that he won't hang around too much. He's wearing a cap, so he's pretty intent on playing the spinners. Time for a change in commentary. It's going to be Amir Sohel and with him, Akhar Ali Khan. Introduced into the attack on his uh, one-day international debut. He was standing at the mid-on and had a Shabir, the senior bowler, at mid-off. And he kept on talking with the youngster. And that is very important when you're rebuilding your side, when uh, you're using a youngster in a high pressure game and so far in Zamamul Haq has been very impressive he has handled the things to win Zamam when seven wickets had gone down to have fielders close to the bat to exert the pressure ah no need to keep fielders uh, close to the bat because he's cleaned him up very nicely Mama Dafis has the last laugh as the crowd cheer the first win for Pakistan in this one-day series. Four more to come after this. In Zamamalak will be a happy man. Multan has been a good hunting ground for him, his hometown. The result is there. Pakistan win by 137 runs. It was a very easy win for Pakistan. 137 runs win in the first one day. And well, the ball straight in the stump, trying to cut that one. So it's all over for Bangladesh. The Pakistan has won the first one international at Multan for, by 137 runs. And uh, I'm sure Pakistani must be very happy with their performance because in the test matches, they were not up to that mark. But one day, it's totally a different ball game and they have proved that they are better side than Bangladesh anytime. And they have dominated the game throughout the day. So Mohamed Rafiq is out for 19. Just got off the blocks poorly, Bangladesh, and after that, couldn't recover. And in the end, uh, that's a sorry batting card you're looking at. Chasing 323, not uh, one batsman getting close to 50. 186 all out, Bangladesh. Although that stubborn last wicket partnership kept the Pakistani bowlers at bay for a while. But an impressive performance by the seamers and also the spinners chipping in. Mohamed Hafiz at the bottom there, 3 for 17 of his 6.2 overs and 3 wickets to Abdul Razak as well. So good comeback for him. Impressive bowling performance by Pakistan. So another confirmation of the match summary in this first match of the Super Asia Cup. 323 for three Pakistan and Bangladesh falling short well by 137 runs. Man of the match was young Yasir Hamid who has carried on his good form from the test series in the one.